Okay, third time's the charm, and the last time I'm doing this. This is the TYT MD380 DMR radio, digital mobile radio. It does the digital system, which is also compatible with Motorola Turbo, or it'll also do analog too. This is the UHF version. There also is a U there also is a version in VHF. If you want more info on DMR, there's a good PDF paper online about it. So, you can go online and actually read that paper and get more info on the DMR system. I'm fairly new to it, so I wouldn't be at a lot of help in answering questions about it. I just wanted to show this off. It's actually got a full color screen. This is the TYT, also known as Titera. Um, the way this works is the repeater is just uses just a conventional frequency pair, just like any other ham repeater. Uses a transmit frequency and receive frequency. But you'll notice we have the worldwide talk group, the North American talk group, the local talk group, which is just like a normal repeater, and the Midwest talk group. We also have Simplex. Now, with this one, this one, or this one, the way this works is you have a series of linked repeaters. They're all linked over the internet. So the worldwide talk group, there's repeaters all over the world. They're linked over the internet, so whenever I key this up, it'll actually send out a signal to our repeater here in Springfield. The repeater will say, okay, the frequency is open, you can transmit. The repeater takes that frequency, sends it over the internet, and it's sent to all the other repeaters. Those other repeaters send out the same frequency will actually send it out on their talk groups and other people around all over the world will be able to hear you. It's pretty cool really. Or if you just want to talk to someone in town you turn to that and it makes it like an ordinary repeater. Now the cool thing about this is I could be talking to my friend on this talk group because the first two channels, channel 1 and channel 2, are actually on time slot 1. Channel 3 and channel 4 or on time slot 2. Now you have to read that PDF to understand more about time slots. But basically that means someone can be talking on channel 1 to their friend and I could be on channel 3 talking to my friend and even though we're using the same frequency we're not going to hear each other or interfere with each other. So it's actually pretty cool. It's actually a time shared. It's all TDMA stuff. It's, it's really neat. but. That's what I wanted to show and talk about is these DMR radios. Cool thing is if there's someone else transmitting, it won't let you talk. And when you key up, that tells me that I didn't hit the repeater. You've actually got, if it'll focus, signal strength on DMR, just like on a cell phone. You can see the little antenna icon up there, not very well. But the way that works is see it keyed up. The way that works is the repeater is constantly sending out a control channel signal, kind of like a trunking system. And your radio is constantly receiving that signal. When it receives the signal well, you get a good signal strength. When it's not receiving it so well, well, you don't. So that's, you can kind of see it there. Yeah, it's a pretty cool system. I'm still fairly new to it, but Basically what you need to do, if you order one of these, you need to go on the DMR Mar Mark site, M-A-R-C, and sign up for an ID. This is assuming that you already are a ham and you already have a call sign. You enter in your call sign and a little bit of info about you, and usually within a few hours to a day, day or two, you will get an ID number. And it's like a six digit long, and you have to actually put that into, into here. You can front panel program these, but so you can actually, here's a guy coming across right now and there's his ID number. Um, you can front panel program these, but it's actually easier to use the included software and the programming cable. You cannot use Chirp with them, it's not compatible with these yet, it may be in the future. But they come with their own software and their own programming cable, which is actually unique to these radios. There's plenty of instructions online on how to install the software, how to install the drivers, and a step-by-step -step guide. One thing I will state, though, if you're reading the guide and it says, oh, you need to update the firmware, do not update the firmware. One reason. These use a newer version of firmware than what's available online. Um, radio info, versions. 
These are using version 13. Um, there you go. Can I see it? They're using version 13.009. If you upload the firmware that's out there, which is like version 3, you will brick your radio, which basically means it won't start up all the way. It'll just show you the home screen thing. It'll just flash on and off and go do 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 type thing like that. Um, the way to recover that is if, if you've done that, you need to find, there's a website out there that has what's called Walking Dead Revival Firmware or something like that. If you flash that in there, you'll get your radio back up and going again. There's also hacked firmware out there. They haven't got that to where it actually works on these newer firmware revisions yet, but they are supposed to get that hacked firmware good to go before too long from what I've heard. Um, there's also plans to come out with one of these that will do P25 and System Fusion and a bunch of other formats too, but that's still in the works too. So stay tuned on the DMR stuff because it looks like it's really going to be a lot of fun and really be interesting. And for more info, search the web for DMR for beginners or DMR for hams and you should find quite a bit of info on there. Uh, we're already at six minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.